Are you guys ready to talk about some weed? Hmm. Uh, or the business of weed. Times are changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on the local news. But nothing good comes from a one-sided point of view. Welcome to Marijuana for Dummies. What can I say? Let's start. Ooh, what is this? Let's, let's start out telling you what I'm smoking because we are resisting the miseducation of marijuana here. And part of that is letting you know what to smoke. Now, one of the things I tell everybody is you got to be careful in terms of what you smoke in the mornings because if you have a really good indica, and today, the marijuana out there, the streets is just off the charts. Just off the charts. It's really hard to get any bad weed. Any weed you get is going to be stronger than anything you had before, unless you've been smoking the top shelf like me. So, it's strong stuff. So, you have to be careful with what you're getting. And I tell people, in the mornings, I tend to have a sativa. And this one, I have. I had to break out my second half ounce of tangy. Tangy, which is a sativa-dominant hybrid. This is a half ounce. Take a look. I'm going to pour it into the... This is what they call weed porn. <laughs> weed porn. I don't know if I can get it all in there. Wow, look at that. Okay. Take a look. That is... Weed porn. Weed porn. For all you smokers out there, I know right now you're starting to have a physical reaction to that. But that is just under half an ounce of tangy. And here in L.A., uh, this ran for about 205 an ounce. So this is a sativa-dominant hybrid. And again, if you smoke this in the morning, I've been smoking this all morning. Notice the difference? Now, there's some mornings I'm with you when I only have, for whatever reason, maybe an indica. I'll tell you, and you be the judge of whether I seem more stoned, you know. But sativa is, you know, sativa, you can get up, make you a pot of coffee, and do work. I have been known to sit there and smoke sativa and work at the computer for eight hours, you know. So, just want you to know, look at, look at this shit. Look at that. You, you you know that without really getting explicit that if you really look closely, it looks like dried poop. <laughs> Just, I don't know what poop you been eating. <laughs> it's what happens you got one of them diets like Vic and Nico. <laughs> Eating all that di- eating all that roughage. I'm just saying, so man. Big poop tastes like straw, <laughs> like straw. Full of fiber. You can feed it to the cows. See what, see what happens. So you can feed it to the cows. I'm just saying. I don't know if that looks like poop to y'all. If people walked long to non-smokers the neighborhood and, and looked down on the grass and saw a, a few mounds of that, they grab the plastic bags, put them on their hand, and say, "Oh my God, my dog lifts this and pick it up, take yeah, it away." Two hundred and five dollars an ounce. Right. <laughs> The question of the day is, when are you impaired by marijuana and how would you know? Very sensitive subject, you guys. And I bring this up because people are starting to respond to the fact that marijuana use is becoming more every day. And hence, you have to have more and more regulations about people who use it while operating vehicles. It turns out that in Canada, flight crews are now prohibited from using any cannabis 28 days before flying. Now that sounds a little excessive. Wow. I, you know, wow. I really, you know, think really in terms of 
unless they have some proof, that's really excessive. Well, we needed some uh, some studies to show degrees of impairment in people. Now, this was, let me just tell you, give you a historical perspective. This was very difficult with alcohol because there are people who perform the tests under the influence of alcohol who perform the tests well, but the other people don't. True. So with alcohol, what happens is with these kind of things is that you have to determine a chemical level that you can measure reliably and then assign some measurement to which you call impairment because it's difficult to prove. You can pass the tests, just like the drunk diving test. You can pass those tests mm -hmm. and still have a bad right. uh Chemical tests, right? Breathalyzer tests. So, you you could certainly be impaired, and I don't know that how you would know. And I'm a pediatrician. One of the reasons why I stopped driving was because I, because of my back, I was smoking marijuana around the clock. Therefore, I didn't feel like I should operate a vehicle at all within four or five, at least. Maybe you've heard me say five or six hours sometimes. Right. Till you feel completely sober. Right. But you right. wasn't waiting 28 days. I wasn't waiting 28 days. I was right. waiting like, you know, hours. You think this I mean, is just self-imposed that they're going, look, we, we can tolerate you smoking marijuana once a month. You think yeah, that's Yeah, it may be because it doesn't, I can tell you right now, they don't have any data for this. Right. They don't have any data for this. This right. is arbitrary. Yeah. There's no data for this to suggest this. And as far as I know, there's not good data at all on marijuana impairment. Right. Which is part of the legal issue that people are going to come into when they get stopped for using. I took it upon myself because I noticed that I was not driving as I should anyway based on aging and other issues, health issues. And then marijuana wasn't helping that. So I decided to stop driving. And I Uber everywhere. And I think that people who smoke should really think about Ubering everywhere. And that's the issue. Right. Uh, I don't know when, and as far as I know, there's no way really currently to objectively measure how you are doing, whether or not you're impaired by your marijuana. But we know people are out there operating machinery, you know, you're in construction, you take a little smoke every morning before you go to work, yeah. that kind of a thing. Uh, how would you know if you're impaired? And I think that there are some inherent dangers in this, and some people are going to make mistakes. You know, I wonder, because I, I haven't looked this up, so this is just putting, the question, putting it out there in the air. I, I wonder if they went through this with the, after you know, the prohibition of alcohol, that they had to go through these the dynamics of the culture of people drinking, going to work and everything. And I wonder how they approached it back in that time. Did they try to self-impose certain conditions um, because they just didn't know? I wonder. Yeah, because as far as I know, alcohol's prevalence prior to that was ridiculous. Babe Ruth... The famous b ball player was known to yes, be showing up drunk, yes, and absolutely. to drink like in the damn near yeah. drinking the batter's box. Oh yeah, it was it was it, it became part like of the culture, the acceptance, you know. So, so I'm people wondering. using alcohol is part of a bunch of things. Yeah, you know, and they used to give the soldiers, <laughs> you know, they had allotment. Of alcohol, yeah. see, because they recognize when you in battle, you need to get high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they traditionally have had allotments of alcohol for soldiers. Ask them why they do that, and they're going to tell you it's traditional. Yeah, I agree. So what I'm suggesting is self-limiting yourself. I think that you shouldn't. You have to really pay attention to what your system is like, and I don't think that you should smoke and operate a vehicle. The question is how long would be reasonable for you to have not smoked before you do operate the vehicle, and again, that's yet to be determined. But when it when we do know more, we'll be the first to talk about it. I hear you. Times are changing. Something stay the same. You start each morning with a cup.
cup of coffee every day Maybe hit the snooze Turn on the local news But nothing good comes from a one-sided point of view Marijuana for dummies Come for the info Stay for the reefer Marijuana for dummies Come for the info and stay